on this second part of the video I'm going to take this five layers of value that I've created I'm going to turn it into something that has a little bit of form to it so in essence what this represents are the five layers of shadows that we have that's why up front is so particularly dark because as it recedes into the background the shadows get lighter uh, through atmospheric perspective so this represents the darkest that the shadows get from there the way to add form is to know your light source and then to use that to add highlights onto each of these layers separately and that's what gives them the feeling of actually having some life to them of being genuine places so I'm gonna start with the foreground layer which is gonna be the one on which you see this effect the most because it has the highest contrast so on this foreground layer I'm gonna do a little trick here uh, to make sure that I keep all of this on the same layer uh, there's this lock above it it says lock transparent pixels if I do that it's only gonna let me paint on what already exists so I can't accidentally go off of it that'll make this a little bit easier so you can see the little padlock right there I can unlock it by clicking it but for right now I'm gonna keep that on and that's gonna to help me get this right I'm gonna drop the opacity of my brush here to about 30 percent that's gonna give me a slower buildup of value so these highlights are not too intense too quickly and I'm gonna start without really intense highlights more of a a darker gray since this is nearly black in fact the these main shadows up front are pretty much black a little charcoal gray going around the edges of it will really liven it up so uh, my light source what I'm assuming here my light source is coming from somewhere right here this is kinda of my focal point that I'm creating so everything's gonna frame around that but of course that lights the sky some as well so we're gonna have some coming around the top and it would be striking right here and around the edges so we'll build that up some and then of course some nice light here on the ground with the shadows coming off. I may not be extremely talkative during this portion. Just because I'm focused in on getting a result. And being that this is a mushroom, I still have my little reference right here. It has these little lines underneath. So I'm gonna guess roughly at what this looks like underneath. I'll create a little reflected light here and then assume that it's striking some of this I went a little too far there because it's supposed to still has the stalk there we go and just a little highlight underneath gives that a little bit of life see it's already starting to take some form which is the whole goal here is to give this a feeling of form like the light is coming around and right here what I'm just thinking about is what is the light hitting what is the light hitting on my image? And that's telling me where to put these highlights. Uh, so that's kind of the first stage of them. Now I'm going to go a little bit brighter, a little more intense, and start adding along to the edges of these. Which each, with each level of brighter shadows, I cover just a little bit less area. Maybe this also has something that kind of resembles roots coming down so you can see a few parts of it. So a little bit of light coming through here. That's starting to feel a little bit more realistic. I think the shadow would cast somewhat further down though, this way. Again, just thinking about the shadows and where they fall. So I'll add some highlights, then I'll go in and take some out. Try to make it feel a little bit dynamic. Okay, at this point, I'm pretty happy with what I have up front there. So I'm going to move on to the second layer. And this layer doesn't have uh, really anything on it aside from just Earth. So I'm going to take a, a highlighted form of it and do essentially what I've done on the ground up here, just add some texture and some highlight. Again, I'm still just using a round brush. 
So I'm using very simple tools to accomplish this. To make it feel like rolling hills that go further back, that's plenty for that one. Uh, now to go in here and add some further highlights for this next set. And these are at least what I'm going to try here is a little brighter. So a little light there, coming down. Pretend that it's casting a shadow out here. Okay, and then this further one out has a little bit of highlight on it as well. So this is giving me a feeling, again, of a little bit more depth. Now for the canyon walls on the back. I'm going to have to check my uh, image here, my reference image, kind of see how it, these handle. I can see some areas of shadow. I can see some broad areas of highlight. It feels very like big chunky faces that come out of the edge of the wall. So that's what I'm going to try to emulate. Assuming that the light is again coming from that kind of middle direction. I'm going to go up here close to white. Not quite there, but close. And start painting some of those in. So it's just some areas in highlight, some in shadow. And together, that should give me the feeling of something that is organic and is real. So I'm looking at my navigator again because that's such a, a useful tool for seeing this from a distance. That's showing me kind of what the overall look is and it's looking pretty good. I'm getting some, some genuine depth for it. If I was going back to do it again I might make this, this middle one here a little bit darker or maybe these mountains in the background a little bit lighter. Uh, I can tweak that a little bit like if I take these mountains and just drop the opacity something. There now they're receding a little bit better. So I did not get the value just perfect there, but just by dropping the opacity of that layer, it does a better job now. So I've got even more depth than I did before and a better separation between these two planes. Uh, now that I have that in the back, in the the on my fourth layer, I'm actually going to add a little bit to this fourth layer. I'm going to grab some from the shadows here and just kind of throw some clouds up in the sky more specifically the shadows on clouds up in the sky because some of it would be hit by the sun so that would be fairly intense but some of it would be shadows so this video is making me feel like Bob Ross which is a good thing here's a happy little cloud So some clouds off in the distance and assuming my light is coming from there. And this is in essence what one of these will look like when it, once it is roughed out and given a little more character and detail. I can also come to think of it, see some of this detail right here. I haven't really moved in to do a lot in the way of detail. But at this stage I could kind of zoom in and then start really looking at how do I make this start to feel real doing smaller brushes, smaller areas. Again, right now I'm trying to get this, this feeling of these being almost like roots coming out of the edges. This could also be a good time to break out some of my specialized brushes, uh, such as this one that I have for ground pebbles. If I hover it over here, ground pebbles, uh, I can take that maybe as a darker version and add some of that overall texture. I'm adding it in dark right now and then I switch to a lighter one and throw some of that in. That was a little too much. That's why we have Command Z. So little, just little bits of texture. Make this up front feel like it has more detail. And show more areas of where the light is hitting. And so this starts to have real depth to it. This is about as far as you want to take one of these uh, first assignments that we're doing. 
in terms of developing something with depth and grayscale, this is about as far as you want to take it. You don't really want to go much more detail than that. I'm going to go back up here and grab this and just change. One more thing here, adding some shadow underneath here to make that feel a little more rounded and realistic. Both sides could use that some. And maybe this gray manages to pull around a little. There we go. That's got that's got a better look to it. So there's there's one done in uh, the combination. I think it's about 17 minutes that went through into both these videos. So it's not too bad. I'm, I'm going to be working much qu more quickly in the software than anybody who's new to it. Uh, but overall, not that much work, work goes into creating a scene like this and giving it actual feeling of depth as long as you're still working in grayscale.